quick little demonstration why uh, I use the rages. They're phenomenal anyways, but every kill shot I've ever had with the rage, I mean, these broadheads right here, this is a new one, obviously it's in my quiver, which means I'll still use it, but I changed to the swackers and I'll kind of show you why. Uh, these are still good. They're good, but most of every pass through or non pass through of the rage broadheads that I used, these blades were just destroyed. I mean, unless I just went between the ribs, luckily, and it somewhere stopped in the middle and started cutting up. But most of the time, they were broke or snapped from the little swivel here. You can take those out and replace these blades. But pretty much every shot I've ever made with those, I've had to replace the blades. I just switched to the uh, swackers this year because little concept I liked from it and I'll explain it here in a second but uh shot two deer already right out of the box put them on replaced you know took the rages off and put the swackers on because I was going to try them and two two for two two nice deer man and these broad this this is actually uh one of the broadheads that was on one of the deer I cleaned it up quite a bit but there's absolutely nothing wrong with these blades I just bought some replacement blades for like 19 bucks and that replaces three broadheads. I just need to swap out two. But honestly, I think I'm going to take these out and hold them with a pair of pliers and resharpen these things up and put them up as replacement blades as well because they're super tough. You know, I watched a little demo where all the mechanicals out there were. They took a pair of pliers and grabbed a hold of them and turned and they all snapped. Or the swackers, they grabbed a hold of it and just bent and bent. And when they let go, it was just in the shape that it would not break. I guess it's the forged but they're super strong two for two and I was about six inches in the dirt after the pass through with both of these broad heads and the blades are still I mean perfect other than being a little dull just from all that but never want to shoot a deer with a dull broad head but anyways a little explanation uh, your rages the reason you got such a huge um, entry wound is because they're deploy on impact it pushes right here on the skin. Let's say if you go in and there's the deer skin. I'm not going to push too hard because once they snap out that O-ring, I'll slice my hand wide open. You push this blade, it comes off of that O-ring. Trying to slide it off without it moving. Regardless, I'll try that one. I don't want to bust that O-ring. They normally don't, I guess, under high speed. That's where, you're, that's where it opens up. They're both right there and the skin touches those and pushes them back. Okay, so by the time you get to the skin, right there that's full deployment okay well you got to pass through and let's just say my two fingers are the ribs it's got to cut through those ribs okay which is fine it, it usually gets through them they you know you can't tell on the shot they're either getting destroyed right there going through the ribs or all that blade is severely dull and once you get on the inside where all your vitals are these things are either destroyed or they're completely dull and it's not really cutting everything it was like I said, I didn't get a lot of pass-throughs on them, but when I did, it was, it was still devastating. of 100% recovery on everything I've ever shot with them, but just as far as the durability. Um, well, that's the concept on that. The open deployment is you just kind of figure on the, if it doesn't damage them, then those rib cages are dulling them. Okay, we go with the swacker. The same thing, since these are used, it's got a little shrink band that goes on there. Look like a little rubber band that slides all the way down. That holds those together. It breaks when you shoot. Okay, but for instance, this doesn't open on deployment. That's why the entry wounds aren't as, uh, aren't as uh, wide as the rage. It's not a deployment on contact. This actually, we'll picture this as the ribs. You get a pass into the ribs. That already opened, but it's okay. I got a shrink. It doesn't have a shrink band on it. Let me hold it. Okay, let's say you go past the ribs here. Once I'm inside, see that point? That's inside the ribs. Your deployment's on those two little notches right there. Pushes them open. Well, now you got full deployment on the inside of the rib cage. Okay, that leaves you fresh two inches of cut and broadhead for all those vitals that you need. Okay, but uh, I skipped both deer out, and I guess it smashed dead on the ribs, but it cracked both of them regardless. And even then, cracking in, you're still not using your normal blades. If that was my rib cage and it just busted it right there, it's still not going to deploy until it gets past that point, which means you got full, you know, 100% sharp blades doing all the devastating work on the inside where it needs to be. And like I said, I, I broke ribs on one side and went through the other side in between the ribs, just looking at the the rib cages after I skinned it. And I was still I was still six inches into the ground, man. And I pulled them out, and 
both blades I got. I don't know where the other one is. It's still in the package somewhere. I gotta re-put it on there. But these are the blades after they were used. I mean, they're absolutely straight, both sides. And like I said, I'm not knocking the rage. I still like them. This one's still a good blade, and it's on the quiver in my arrow because I'm gonna use them up. I'm not gonna throw them away. I just, I just like the theory behind fresh blades cutting the vitals once you, you know, get past the penetration. And that's really my only deal. Uh, I like them both. I haven't had any problems with them. They fly true to field points, man. If you Rage, if you buy a Rage, it comes with a practice tip. It's blue, it doesn't open, it's just set and it just t shows you how it flies. You can shoot your broadhead targets with it. But, uh, I mean, if you think it's gonna fly different for some reason, then just waste one and shoot it on your block target or whatever. I mean, it's, it's worth knowing if it's gonna do what it's supposed to do before you get out there and maim something. But it's, it's pretty much gonna fly like you want it to. But like I said, there's a difference to me. I'm a professional, I've just bow hunted since the fifth grade. I shot my first buck in fifth grade. I've been ate up with it ever since. I got deer rifles, got plenty of rifles, but they stay in the gun case. I'm serious, 100% bow hunting from since the fifth grade, and I'm, what, 40 now, so it's been fun, and it's just trial and error, and I do like these kind of mechanical. They're go both good, though, so, I mean, there's your difference, and that's kind of why I went to the Swackers, and got away from the rages but like I said I'll still shoot them I'm not knocking them in as they're both devastating but durability these are the way to go the swackers they're pretty nice well good luck with everybody on the hunt knock them down send us pictures